You can support Retro Recollections on Patreon, just like these wonderful folks. Thank you for your support. Hi everyone, welcome back to Retro Recollections. We're back on with some more Amiga goodies today. Now you might be wondering what this setup and contraption is on here. Well, I'm going to show you a very handy accessory I picked up that's related to my floppy drive situation with the A500 that I picked up. So let me show you what I've got set up here. Okay, so this device is very, very handy. It allows you to plug in two drives into the external floppy um, DB23 port on the back of the Amiga. And it also gives you the functionality of using a PC floppy as well as a, an Amiga floppy drive. And you can switch between having the Amiga floppy as DF1 and the PC floppy as DF1. So one becomes DF1, one becomes DF2. Very handy when you've got a switch, which I haven't got yet. Now, I got this off eBay, but there's a fella in uh, Greece, I believe, that's making these. Uh, quite reasonable, I think it cost me about 16 pounds for, for the cable. Um, all I will say is that I did have to modify mine slightly because as you can see on these, these pictures, uh, the one when he supplied it, um, it came with like a little, it's got a little uh, female uh, adapt um, power port thing that is just literally screwed into two pins on, on, the, on the PCB. Now, it kept coming off, uh, no matter how tight I screwed it in and everything, so what I ended up doing, plus it was very short, and it was basically pushing up against the monitor and things, and every time I moved, because the cable was so short, every time I moved the, the drives, it would um, dislodge. And I, at first I thought there was a fault, because I kept losing connection to the drives and everything, but I realised, oh, the power things come off. So what I've done is I've soldered an extension cable to it, uh, and then soldered the, the connector to the end of the, my extension cable, which gives me a lot more room to manoeuvre and it's rock solid now, it doesn't move, it doesn't come off. So, you know, you get what you pay for. I'll put a link in the, in the description, but as I, can, as, I, as I said, it's very handy to have. Once I get my switch to switch from DF0 to DF1, because uh, I am looking to get some some actual Amiga titles, it will be nice to be able to, to back those up um, as well as play them directly uh, to, for testing and everything like that, but I'd love to preserve them as well. Which brings me on to the next part, which are ADF files. Now, I spent a lot of time researching, you know, because everybody, there's lots of videos, lots of information about uh, ADF files, you know, and go text how handy they are to have them you can flip through them so and so forth but there's not tons of information about creating them now i know there's there are there are methods of doing it. you can use for example win ua uh, the amiga emulator on pc uh, create adf files with that and you can obviously uh, do stuff like that with that and there's also um for think for amigas with hard drives there's there's a solution where you can rip a disk or you know or copy a disk to an ADF uh, using uh, some software applications that are freely available but uh, for my, my situation with a, a 500 which I haven't got a hard drive for yet um, I was looking at the best way to do it now lots of things lots of uh, forum posts were saying, right, well, you can just create a blank ADF in WinUAE, format it, put it on your on your USB stick, uh, you know, and then do it that way. But I'm thinking, well, if the ADF file is literally an image on a floppy disk, can't I just get any ADF file and format that? Which is what I've done. So basically, I've all I've done is created three copies of that, put them in my saves folder under blank one, blank two, blank three, and then you just format the disk. We well, may put, might not even have to do that, but I did it just to make sure it was working. I formatted the blank one ADF that was on the GoTech using XCopy, and then I copied. 
I copied another file onto it and it's copied it fine. So it seems to be the easiest way to do it. Okay, at the moment, um, I've run an X copy from the, uh, the GoTech. Uh, as you can see, and I think Doug, you were asking this, Doug from um, 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast about um, whether this drive gets detected without a disc. Now, from my experience messing around with this, if I don't have a disc in the drive when I boot up, for example, Xcopy or whatever, or even Workbench, it doesn't detect the drive. And even if I put a disc in now, nothing happens. Drive 2, the PC drive, is detected whether there's a disc in it or not. So it must be something to do with the cabling or this drive doesn't have the disc detection uh, the Amiga disk detection like you were possibly um, getting at before. So it's not a big problem because I believe if I had it as DF0 it would automatically check it and if I have it as DF1 if I I just have to make sure there's a disk in it. Once there's a disk in it I can swap disks no problem which I will show you in a minute. So for example if I put this in here please excuse the crude setup here. <laughs> It's only temporary. Um, hopefully, I'm going to get a better way of keeping these together. But it's trying to keep it together. I've just had to tape them up. If I then do a soft reboot and boot into um, X Copy again via the GoTech, you should be able to hear this one starts to click, and we should get detection. There we go. So that one's clicking and this one's detecting. Right, as you can see, you need to do a full reboot for this disk to be detected, but now it is detected. Once you take it out, it gets detected every time. If I put it back in, the disk's detected. If I put in the second drive, is the PC floppy drive. It's also detected, so it works really well. Let's put just do a see that one's even quicker. Let's do a test, do some diagnostics. Right, so we're just running a, a test kit, um, some test kit software here, so we can check these floppies. Oh, look. So this one actually will detect whether it's a go to it thinks that first one's a go tech uh, and it detects DF1 and DF2. So we can do let's escape and let's try F3 for DF2. Ready signal is oscillating. Hacked PC drive. Well it is a PC drive, so it's quite clever this software. If it detects uh, all tracks red okay. So we've got X copy loaded up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this disk image. Let's put what should we put on? All right. Arcade pool. Right, so now we've got arcade pool as DF0. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it to disk. And then I'm going to copy it to a blank ADF. Um, arcade pool is set on DF0. DF1 is the target drive. So we're going to copy DF0 to DF1. Right, so now DF1 should also be arcade pool. So let's uh, try and get a disk info. No, it's because it's a game disc, it's not, you can't do it necessarily. Yeah, so, okay. So, now we're going to change the source of DF0, so the GoTech. Right, blank 3. So that's now blank 3 that's on, on there. Let me see that. Blank 3 ADF. So what I'm going to do now is copy the 
source drive will be DF1 and destination DF0. I'm going to copy it back to an ADF. But first I'm going to format it just to make sure. So I'm going to format blank 3. Oh, sorry, destination. So I'm going to format blank 3. Call it new. It doesn't really matter what we do it as, so it's now formatting. You can see it's it's writing to the disk. You can see the flashing W means it's writing to blank three. Right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to select the source drive as this one and we're going to copy to the GoTech also you can see it's writing and I think all you need to do this is make sure you've got the latest um, flash floppy firmware which I think is 2.13 I know previous firmwares had issues where you get errors and I believe it, it's been sorted since then so we'll, we'll soon find out because what we're going to do after this is we're going to boot from blank 3 and see if we get arcade pool right so that should be done what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove the disc I'm going to set this back to auto boot do a soft reboot and then I'm going to select blank 3 from the menu to boot straight into. Right, so if I go to floppies, save folder, blank three, it there let's F7 and it'll put it straight into number one anyway so F7 saving selection rebooting let's see if this has worked okay pull there we go fantastic so this is a fantastic solution for backing up discs to ADF Right, well I hope that was useful, um, as I said if you're looking for a cable like this, uh, I'll put a link in the uh, description, just be aware of that power issue, you might have to do a bit of tinkering, you know, or you might get lucky, yours might, I might just have a one off where it was a bit loose, but um, other than that it's working really well. Yeah, so thank you very much, uh, thanks for watching, give me a like if you liked it, <laughs> and uh, if you haven't subscribed already please do, I'm slowly building up. Uh, this Amiga and, and I've got something else coming soon which I'm not going to spoil which is going to help tremendously with showcasing this and uh, yeah I'm producing stuff all the time so well thank you very much there's loads of links in the description as to you can get in touch with me you can support the show uh, and all sorts of stuff so uh, have a look in the description there's also a link to this device have a good one and I'll see you next time